Now we're going to start right off with making a orange wreath. Yes, a dried orange wreath. Oh my gosh, it is just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just going to show you the simple steps of making this. So we start off with a wreath form, whichever wreath form you'd like to use, and then oranges. And so now I'm just going to try to uniformly cut my orange slices um, as best as I can. So I know the smaller ones I'm not going to be using, but I'm, I'm going to stay about, I don't know, one eighth of an inch, maybe one third. I don't know how I didn't measure them <laughs> y'all. I just know that I want them to be thin enough that, uh, when they dry, they're going to shrink a little bit that they're not going to be too thin. So, yep, I'm just going to try to cut them all up as evenly as I can. To forgive me for my 20 year old <laughs> air bake baking sheets that I absolutely love. So you're just going to go ahead and place them on a baking sheet. We're going to set your oven for 200 degrees and then they're going to cook for hours. Now my direction said that I only needed to cook them for two hours. Well, I think maybe they meant two hours on one side and then two hours flipping them over. You can tell me different if you have done it and it achieved it. Mine did not dry out in the first two hours. So after the four hours of them drying out, I guess it just all depends on your oven and what I don't know, but anyway, I did get them to dry out. You know when there's, you know when they're they're dry and they don't have that moisture anymore. So we're going to start off with the wreath form by making a hanging system because you're going to be gluing the oranges on top of it. So you want to have your hanging system in place. And I'm just using a simple linen ribbon, and then I'm just going to tie just a generous. I'm going to give myself enough to hang it from, and then just a simple knot at the top and cut the excess off. I did use a whole bag of navel oranges for this project, and I'm, I'm sorry I don't know the measurements of my wreath, but I would think it's like an 18 inch, may, maybe, I'm, I'm guesstimating on that, y'all. <laughs> so now I'm just going around. I know that I'm going to be doing a double layer because you're going to see, you're still going to see a little bit of that green wreath form, and that's fine, but I just want to make sure that I have, I picked out my larger pieces to kind of uniformly go around and then I will start to hot glue those on and then I'll put my smaller ones on top. And then now that I have all my oranges hot glued on, I'm going to add just a little bit of simple greenery. I just have some of this leftover fresh pine that I'm just going to cut up. Um, the, my inspiration showed some rosemary. I don't have any fresh rosemary in hand, so I'm going to be using some of these evergreens. Welcome to the channel. This is Yvonne. If you are new here and you're on Ginger Chick Rehab and on my channel, I love to take secondhand finds and not only make them over, but also decorate with them. So, so if you all don't know this about me, I have an addiction. I have an addiction for bottle brush trees. Oh, I think last year during my Christmas reveal of my how I decorated my house, I had over a hundred 
in my decor. Well, these are some that just didn't make the cut this year that I had thrifted. They didn't fit into my decor, but I still want to use them. So yes, yes, I am. I am spray painting them. So they are going to fit in my decor. They're just odds and ends of colors that I just don't have this year. So yes, I'm just taking some regular spray paint in the white and I'm going to go ahead and spray paint them up. Now I have them laying on their side. You're going to have to kind of get every kind of which way and that to get in there. But look how quickly it transforms these hodgepodge of colors into something amazing. And what I like about this transformation is you can actually still see the hue of color underneath. Even though I ended up doing multiple coats, I absolutely love how they look snow kissed. So I'm going to show you what my inspiration and why I wanted some white trees. So this is my kitchen table. We just have a little kitchenette. I have a thrifted seed sack that I use as like a little table runner. I absolutely love it. I have it there all year long. I love the red of it. So I always kind of off center whatever I'm placing on top of it. So you see that feed sacks or grain sack seed sack <laughs> so now I just have another one of our auction finds just the simple low box and then oh my goodness this bad boy y'all <laughs> so yes I saw Genevieve on her channel do where she had this that if you watched my haul video I told you I was going to do that with this and yeah I have a, a few little wooden items and Chris was wondering how much that inside was worth <laughs> but I'm like it was in her inventory I'm just gonna go ahead and use it and some like those juicers never sell <laughs> so at least I filled it up with some stuff that just kind of just sits there but oh my gosh what a absolutely gorgeous statement piece Now I'm going to use another box and this is one of those cheese boxes. I picked this one out because it still has that little bit of red for the Christmas season on it. And then now here are the trees up close and personal and I absolutely love them. So yes, I wanted to add a little bit of natural display and with the jar of wooden items and my boxes, I just absolutely love my auction finds my old and with some new and even repurposed so oh my gosh so see how it just i just i am in love with how these spray painted up so yes i'm just going to kind of match up some of the trees and put them around here and then i picked these up at 60 percent off they're resin deer but they still have that wood grain i think they were 9.99 and then 60 percent off so they were minimal but they definitely go in with that wooden theme and then a few more of the little trees so we have a deer standing up a deer laying down and then to add a little bit more pop of color in there i don't want to go crazy i actually have an old vintage christmas card that came from an auction hall to actually get it to stand up and not sink into the box, I'm actually opening it up on both sides and letting the end, closed end, rest on the box so it stays in the upward position. And then to finish off this little vignette, I actually just got this in an auction find, this enamel wear, a little bit on the beat up. Oh, I love them when they're beat up. <laughs> and I'm going to use it to hold one of my favorite farmhouse candles. So I liked, it's a little bit, um, larger so I just put the lid underneath to lift it up. Now next up, it's a, a lot of these are so simple but such statements. So I actually picked this tray up this cake plate tray and the 75 percent off clearance at hobby lobby it was part of their harvest and so yes i have uh, you all know if you watch my channel that i collect vintage bibles i love black vintage bibles and i have quite a collection and y'all some of you all have sent bibles to me and i appreciate each and every one that you have sent to me so 
I kind of gathered up some that um, kind of teared and that had a little bit of the red pages in it because yes, I am doing a Bible book stack and it is appropriate, definitely appropriate for this time of year. So what I'm doing is I started off with the largest one on the bottom and then I'm rotating it. And you'll see as I tear up, as I tear up, I'm going to be making a tree. Oh my goodness. So I've talked about God Wink moments before here on the channel. And look at this. I found this at my local Goodwill. Perfect red color, perfect size for my Bible stacks, and a perfect tree topper. And then, of course, you could do that with any books that you have. And, well, let's talk about another book stack while we're here. So I have this old bunt pan. Maybe I'm not really sure. It had a lid. I took the lid off. But I needed a tree trunk. So I have these left over from last year that I used as risers to display Christmas items in our retail booth and around my home. So this is so super simple. So you don't necessarily have to have red. You could have whatever color you want. You could have them whichever way but just guesstimate on your halfway point the same with the bible stack you kind of want the bigger ones to be on the bottom and you kind of want to tear up but I find that my books are almost all the same size so yes I'm just opening them up and I'm laying them one on top of the other and then as I up as I add them in I kind of am shifting that it is centered in its level that it's not going to tip over That I shared those two extremely simple <laughs> displays. Let's, oh my gosh, so I look at all these bells. One day I walked into the Salvation Army and they had all of these $3.99. Look at all these jingle bells. Though for me, I'm more of a rusty crusty kind of girl, so I don't really want them to be shiny. So let me share a new product that I'm going to be trying to make these rusty crusty. Then if they didn't look like a lot hanging there, look at them all together. But I am just going to quickly snip them off of the roping that they are on. And I think they still have the price tags on it. I don't think anybody actually even used these. So I had just recently tried the bleach, the hydrogen peroxide, the vinegar, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I am a very impatient person. I do not have days to wait for something to rust. <laughs> So I actually ordered this off of Amazon. I saw another TikToker use this on one of her projects. She's a beautiful furniture flipper, Molly B on TikTok. And so I'm like, oh, I need to order some of that. So there's three different steps. And yes, it's a much faster than 24 hours. So the first things first is you start off with your primer, which is already the kind of that rust color. But yeah. So we're going to go ahead and I am just going to start brushing this on. The directions did state that two coats of primer are needed, but the directions that showed that show show a complete covered. I don't want a complete coverage. I want to still see some of that silver underneath. So I am choosing only to do a one coat. But as you see, I told you I'm impatient. So I'm gonna use the heat gun to help this primer dry. Now next, I'm gonna be using the iron. Now this comes in different patinas. You can get a, the green, the copper, the, you know, but I chose the rust one. So it comes with this iron paint 
and now I'm going to go ahead and paint that over. Now I did do two coats of this because as I'm painting it on, you can kind of see the streak marks. It probably wasn't quite enough with just one coat, but the same thing I put the coat on, I use the heat gun to dry it and then put a second coat over it. This is what they look like with one coat of primer, two coats of the iron, and now the next step is the misting spray. So the direction said on this one, you spray it lightly first. So I'm just going to do a nice light spray. You wait five minutes and then you spray it again. And then it takes 30 to 40 to, to an hour for the chemical reaction to happen for them to rust. And then it is recommended to seal these in with something. So I'm just using my weather defense metal spray to seal them in. Now, as you notice, it darkens it back up just a little bit, probably more of that true rusty color. So I did end up putting on it two coats. Don't panic because some of that lighter rust did stay and some of it stayed darker. But oh, I absolutely love this. And this was a minimal time compared to putting it in a solution cost efficient. It was probably cheaper than doing all, buying hydrogen peroxide, bleach, vinegar, toilet bowl cleaner, the whole works. And definitely time and money, it was more cost efficient, actually. Do you wonder how I'm going to style them? Oh my goodness. So yes, Lori Jo gave me one of these and I thought it was a berry crate, but it says asparagus. It's an asparagus gatherer. Well, after you pick your asparagus, you put it in there. But I love how these turned out. I love the perfectly imperfect. Maybe if I would have put two coats of the primer on, it would have been more of a salad, but I didn't want it salad. I like it I like it like that. So this is the manufactured one that came off something. And this is the, I, I like these, but personal preference of what you like. So actually I'm just going to display these beauties in this basket. And I'm going to add some of the fresh evergreens that my daughter was so kind to bring home to me. why we're talking about metal baskets I just actually got this from a antique store a secondhand store that was a downsizing and closing just to sell online so I have this and then now I have a box that came in an auction hall I love to layer I love wire baskets sometimes I'll use crocs but for this I'm using a wooden drawer and then I have thrifted these forever ago. I keep them around. I love enamelware. They're kind of odd because they say something on them, some kind of advertisement. I have never painted over them. I just use them in displays like this. And actually my thrift store, my local Goodwill, has some of these Target dollar spot trees. And I needed a couple extra trees. So I'm like, perfect because I can take that plaid off and use them as is. So yes, I'm just going to go ahead and set them in the cups. But first, I want to go ahead and pull them out so I can put the enamelware cups in the drawer. And then I want to add an accent of these wooden beads. I know you can get a lot of these wooden beads at Walmart in their holiday. These just happen to come in an auction hall extras.
Now when I set this vignette where I wanted it to be, the dark was too dark and it kind of just disappeared. So I ended up adding this little old journal that just has a little bit variance of color along with an, another old Christmas card that was in my stash. And I think it just tops it right off. Now my next project <laughs> is, yes, I believe it's a sock dryer. I saw a lot of these going for sale at auctions and I never, I always got outbid. I never was able to bring any home. So seeing a lot of Instagram posts of people displaying with them, I'm like, oh, I want a few. So found some random pieces of aged wood to be able to cut them out. And so we just drew a form. I'm doing this project with my husband, Chris, if you are new to our channel. So yes, I just um, made, it's, it's not quite like a stocking shape. It's definitely a sock. So it's a little bit thinner so I just kind of we kind of traced it out together deciding on a um, pattern to use. I'm just lucky enough that we are wood hoarders so even when I see any all who are crafters probably do the same thing we always know that we will find a use for this wood <laughs> for this wood so this is my first template that I'm going to cut out just to make sure before cutting out I have another piece of wood that I want to use to make a matching set but just in case I mess up this is just a scrap piece that got cut off another project so I'm just pencil tracing it on to the wood. Then this is the other piece of wood that I'm using. That way I can have a matching set, a pair. Now you all know if you watch my channel regularly that I usually don't do a lot of cutting. I usually let Chris do the cutting, but I was pretty sure that I think I could control this project. So using the bandsaw, you could actually use a jigsaw to cut this out also. We just happen to be blessed to have a bandsaw. So all I'm doing is I'm staying on the outer edge edge. I don't want to go right on my line to, in case I go wonky. So I'm going out a little bit trying to make those curves. And then I did not really get extremely co close to my sock, but <laughs> so now we're just taking, I think this is a drum sander, a friend um, that she was selling some tools at, an est at her husband's estate. So Chris picked this one up. I have never actually even used this, but he thought this would be a perfect <laughs> sander for me to use to get a little bit closer to that pencil line. And of course, you could just leave it as is. You could use um, sandpaper. Uh, it may be a little bit of overkill, but Chris is a tool guy. So anytime he can use any of his tools, he is going to. Oh my goodness, I am just loving on these. But I need to drill a hole to be able to hang them. So I don't, this is a thinner wood, so I don't want to do too big of a hole. And I also don't want to do the hole too close to the top. Out of the top, this is old wood. I don't want it to split. Now that I have the hole cut out, I do want to actually paint these. You could leave them. It is a beautiful color. And I am going to show some of the color, but I'm going to actually put natural wax around the edges. I want those edges to still show that beautiful aged wood. And this is going to act just like a candle wax or your Vaseline. It's just not going to allow the paint to stick. So yep, just some natural wax. There's so many hacks of how to distress a project. And this is what I'm choosing for these. I always love to share something new on every video if I can. And now when it comes to painting these white, I'm just doing a dry brush. I'm not looking for complete coverage. So I put just a little paint on. I'm trying to stay in the one direction going with the wood grain, letting that hit. Not a heavy hand, not a lot of paint on. Like I said, it's just a dry brush technique. <music> Thank you. 
And so I can proceed on my project and get my project done in one day. I'm going to go ahead and take the heat gun to help dry that paint. And it's funny because as I'm drying it kind of like candle wax, the wax is kind of melting and I, it's kind of fun to see that stay wet. But um, yeah, we're just going to get these dried so I can go ahead and scrape these off to show that wood underneath. And now for the ribbon, I actually, we have a random, I love auctions, y'all, because you find the neatest stuff. So there's just this piece of leather and it is dry. So the leather is beautiful. It's aged. It matches so pretty, but it is dry. So I'm going to go ahead and actually soak it in some of my um, Waverly Antiquing Wax wet watered down mixture. Um, and see if that kind of revives this letter leather a little bit. But actually when I went to tie it, it still kind of broke off. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of the natural wax on it and help that recondition it a little bit more. I really want to use this, but I don't want to keep breaking it off into pieces. So have I inspired you in any way to look at secondhand finds in a new way? Yes, not just on the everyday, but you putting them together to make something beautiful for your own decor. Or yes, you can put these together and give them out as gifts. It is the time of giving. So I hope that I have inspired you in any way to look at secondhand finds in a new way. And as always, give me a quick comment, have I? And <laughs> have you done any of these yourself? Or are they on your to do list now that you've seen them? Maybe, probably, maybe not for this year, but maybe for next year. So, again, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out this channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!